Yeah, when, when we got into the briefing room uh, and they drew the curtains back and we saw this ribbon right away across going through Denmark, uh, we looked, we, we couldn't believe it, you know, Peter Munda, where's that? What's that all about? Never heard of it. And of course, all we, all we were told, we weren't told that it was uh, experimental for rockets. We were just told that it was a, a research station. I think they mentioned uh, uh, important radar. But the thing was, at the end of the briefing, they said, if you don't do the job tonight, you'll go back tomorrow night, the night after that, and the night after that. And that, that really hit us because you can imagine the reception that we'd have had on the second night if we'd have gone back again. I mean, we were, we were lucky, our, our group, because originally we were scheduled to go in on the last wave. Our, our particular target was the uh, living quarters for the technicians and the scientists. And uh, because of a change of wind, I think Martin Middlebrook mentions it, because of a change of wind, they thought that the smoke canisters on the airfield would, uh, or on the station, would uh, blot out the, uh, the uh, living quarters and that. So they reversed it. So we went in first. And as it turned out, very lucky because by the time the night fighters got in from south of Berlin up to the uh, up to Pienemunde, it was the last waves that uh, bore the brunt of it. Mm. I think it was what forty, yeah. forty odd. Mm. So we were very we were very lucky. As far as far as the target was concerned, it it. As far as we were concerned, in some ways, it was a piece of cake because going in early, uh, the, the the flat was only light light flat to start with, and uh, we were in and bombed and out straight away. And it was later on that the night fighters arrived, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. See, they'd had a fairly, I understand, they'd had a fairly heavy day, the fighters, uh, with the American daylight raids. And, uh, of course, the fact that there was a mosquito diversionary raid to Berlin made everybody think that uh, Berlin was going to be the target. So, I mean, they, they, they just veered off uh, before we got to... Uh, before we got to Pienemunde. You were under the control of a master bomber? Yeah, that, that, right. that was the first one, Group Captain Searby. And was that, were you listening? You had him, the wireless yeah. operator, got you? Yeah. I mean, because we got in on the early marking. So at that time, at that stage, the raid wasn't really underway. So we were able to bomb the initial markers. But you didn't know that it was a secret weapon? No. Was it? no. And when did you first find out? After the war? Or? No, I think it was... Uh, I, don't really, I don't really know whether we did find out it was rockets at that time. Mm. Mm. Probably much later. When you're going over the, the target, George, what, what... Are you... Just focusing totally on your instruments and listening to the bomb aimer, or, or what are you doing? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, making sure your course, you're on a direct course, and making sure that you are keeping to his instructions, you know, steady, right, or left, so on. Um, you really, it's, it's really in his hands at that stage.